Vice President Harris took to the stage in Charlotte, North Carolina on Saturday, one year after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, to double down on her push to codify abortion access in federal law. The conservative court majority that overturned Roe created a health care crisis in America, she said. How dare they? Harris and President Biden received early endorsements by a slate of women's rights organizations and abortion access nonprofits on Friday, and Harris signaled that abortion rights will be an important part of her re-election bid in 2024. Extremist so-called leaders have enacted laws that ban abortion, some without acceptance for survivors of the crimes of rape and incest. She said in a video message posted Saturday, well, now I'm demonetized. Uh, they want to pass a national abortion ban, Harris added. We will not allow them to destroy the basic rights and principles upon which our nation was founded. Political experts have cited the abortion rights issue as one reason Democrats beat expectation of 2020 midterm elections. Harris, the, top, the first female vice president, has since taken up reproduction and women's rights as one of her main issues. We cannot, in our nation, allow people to silently suffer without telling their stories in a way that hopefully understands the importance of uplifting their voices in support and in love and with a sense of empathy and agreement that they shouldn't have to have those kinds of experiences, Harris said Saturday. The vice president also vowed that she and Biden would continue to do our part, whatever that means, including pushing for laws that codify the protections Roe offered. She also shared a video from the White House with the caption, the Biden-Harris administration will keep fighting to ensure women can make decisions about their own health, lives, families, and futures. Since the Dobbs v. Jackson um, women's health organization decision was handed down last year, which ended the constitutional right to abortion provided by Roe, 24 states, including North Carolina, have passed or enforced law restriction, re laws restricting access to abortions. These laws are facing legal challenges in nine states. An NBC News poll released Thursday found that 61% of Americans do not approve the Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe. That includes about a third of Republicans and 80% of women. Excuse me. Harris said the administration's goal is to pass a bill codifying access to abortion procedures in federal law, legalizing it despite the court's decision last year. Democrats are fighting for reproductive rights and legislation that restores the protections of Roe v. Wade, Harris tweeted on Saturday, and the majority of Americans are with us. So, one of the most frustrating parts about being a commentator that identifies as progressive is that so often you'll want to give someone credit when they say something you agree with and they do something you like but you're always reminded of the uh, neoliberal approach to politics which is always this little tiny tinkering when you need some kind of big initiative to make sure something is stronger than it already is now for those who don't remember and we always give our little history lessons the Democrats had a supermajority in 2009, all the way up until 2000, so for two years. That was while Obama was president, while Biden was VP. And in spite of having this supermajority, they did not codify Roe v. Wade. And later, after the Democrats uh, gained the House and Senate, albeit not with the supermajority, but still had, they had a majority in both chambers under um, Biden's first two years, they still did not attempt to codify Roe v. Wade. Now, when Harris was later asked after Roe v. Wade was overturned why you guys didn't try to codify it, we just, we just assumed that uh, it was settled, even though Republicans have been saying they want to ban abortions for what feels like, what, five decades, four, four, four decades and nine years. And when you think about how she did nothing, Biden did nothing, Obama did nothing, you know, we can go down the list of people who had supermajorities and um, just chose not to do anything, even though the Democrats' position, you know, 20, 30 years ago was more pro-life than anything else, which is why I don't go after them as aggressively as the ones that have been in the contemporary era. But still, when you think about all the opportunities they had to try and do something to protect Roe v. Wade, and then they come around, at, we know that it's been overturned, but if you let us get a bigger number of seats, this time we're really going to fix it, even though we actually aren't too upset that they got overturned because... Uh, People donated to us and voted for us and generally assisted us in our re-election bids. And we got this big boost from your outrage 
and got paid a great deal from your suffering. But, you know, we, we totally want this to be fixed. And I swear, politicians, so often they have this word salad. We cannot in our nation allow people to silently suffer without telling their stories in a way that hopefully understands the importance of uplifting their voices. It's like, idiot, if you want to uplift their voices, you would have done something legislatively. You would have pushed for a bill in the House and sent it to codify Roe v. Wade. You would have uh, tried to expand your majority in the Senate by being competitive in red-leaning, I'll admit, but states that Democrats can win, such as Louisiana, Texas, um, I mean, at this point, even Kentucky. You know, you wouldn't just go, well, I hope that the Republicans don't overturn it now that they have the Supreme Court. I really hope they don't. Oh, they did? Oh, well, oh, well don't worry, guys. At, at some point, we'll be able to codify it. Just, just give us enough seats. I tell you, when you when you when you pay enough attention to this stuff, you really start to realize just how much of a revolving door hamster wheel it is, where it's just running in circles, and it doesn't have to be this way. Like, yeah, the Supreme Court, you know, overturned it, but that wouldn't have happened if the Democrats had a majority in the Senate and pre prevented those justices from being confirmed for their lifetime appointments. And like I said, people that are like more, you know, just blind supporters of the Democratic Party will tell you, you always blame the Democrats and you don't get upset by the people who actually, over it's like, yeah, the people who actually overturned it are the enemy of abortion rights. You don't get mad at the enemy who are, who is telling you very honestly, if we get the power, we're getting rid of this. You get mad at the people who are supposed to be on your side, who have the power to protect you. Who didn't do enough to prevent this from happening to you so i'm not i'm not sure why i would get mad at the people who were honest about their intentions versus the ones that uh were very much just kind of sitting on their hands and spinning their wheels and and waiting for people to donate after they became upset that their rights were being taken away <sighs>